for a few moments. I want to turn to the book of Matthew tonight. I want to thank all those who prepared for this evening. That was just wonderful. <clears throat> thank you for doing that. I actually wasn't going to do it because I thought, well, no one's going to be able to get it together because we've been off and sick and all of that. And uh, I started hearing about pieces being prepared. And I said, okay, I guess we're going to do it. So uh, praise the Lord. Turned out just beautiful tonight. And thank you so much uh, for your participation. Matthew chapter 2, 1 to 11. We're looking at one word tonight, house house if you want to expand on that the wise men went to the house not the barnyard not the stable not the inn not where the majority of folks think and so we're going to emphasize the house and also make some applications for us as well matthew chapter 2 beginning verse number one <coughs> Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. <clears throat> and when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. And now Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel." Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this wonderful account of our Savior in his years as a toddler. And uh, the wise men have made a, a tremendous journey from far away. Preparations were made. They got on the journey. They got there to uh, Bethlehem. And uh, the king was troubled. He was astounded with this huge uh, caravan of people who arrived on the scene. And we ask, Lord, that you might uh, speak to our hearts, not just about the house where the wise men found the baby Jesus, but we want to think about our own house tonight and how that works uh, in your plan. And so we ask for your help and direction. I ask you, Holy Spirit, to fill me, fill me right now for this time. I trust I depend on you for that, not in myself. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a lot of mystery concerning the wise men. I've always been intrigued with the wise men. Their trip to Bethlehem. And we can't pinpoint the exact spot where they came from. We don't know the exact time when they got there. We just don't know that. What we do know is that Herod had all the baby boys killed from two years and younger. So that is proof positive that Jesus was a toddler when the wise men came and found him and worshipped him in his own house, or shall I say the house of Mary and Joseph. Uh, we do not know exactly when they arrived. We do not know how they knew the star signaled the birth of Christ. We have some ideas about Daniel's prophecies and Daniel's teaching and, 
and Daniel being the head of uh, all the stargazers in Babylon, maybe trickling down from him to these men. We don't know for sure, but that's a possibility. But there are some things we do know about these men. Number one, they were indeed wise men. <laughs> indeed, they were wise men. And we know that the that wise men still seek the Savior today. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, And you shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all of your heart. Seek and you shall find. Those who want to know Jesus those who want to know who the true God is, and they have that longing in their heart, God is going to get them the message. We know that the wise men did not arrive at the stable. They did not arrive in a barnyard. They did not see the infant baby Jesus who was just born. We know that the wise men found Jesus in a house. And isn't it amazing how many folks do not know that, don't understand that. You know, if, if you drive around Carlisle, and uh, I took uh, my girls out and looking at the lights and so forth uh, one night uh, not too long ago, and I was very pleased to find lots and lots of nativities around Carlisle, and I'm always reminded of the ones out on Route 174, uh, where you're getting close to Walnut Bottom Road, and there's three houses there that all have uh, nice nativity sets, two of those homes those individuals know what the Bible says. They've got the nativity here, and they've got the wise men across the yard. The third group has them at the manger, so they don't know the real truth. So it's always interesting to ride around and, and notice what do people do with this. Now, I'm thankful for everybody who puts it out, and it, it's awesome. I, uh, personally, I wish I had a life-size Nativity, I mean, well, I guess Joseph wasn't 6'1", but maybe <laughs> it'd be neat to have a life-size one of those and, and all that goes with it would be really cool. So it's just amazing that uh, so many folks don't know about the house. And so uh, we just want to focus for a few minutes on the house and let's bring it home to our own house. So it is wise to have Jesus in your house. It is wise to have Jesus in my house. You know, to some people, Jesus lives at the church building. And when they leave the church building, they leave Jesus behind until the next week. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ ought to be recognized in our houses, not just when we go to the house of God. And so we know from Scripture that the Lord Jesus brings blessing to the house. For example... Jesus brought blessing to Peter's house in Mark chapter 1. We know that Jesus brought salvation to the house of Zacchaeus in Luke chapter 19. We know that Jesus brought fellowship to the house of Lazarus. And then he also, and that's John chapter 12, and then Jesus saves the whole household in their house, the Philippian jailer. And what a time they had there. The salvation came to that house. They believed in that house. They fellowshiped in that house. They had a, a wonderful meal in that house in Acts chapter 16. You know, God can use all of us to bring salvation to someone's house here in the Carlisle area. So here's a question. Is Jesus comfortable in my house? Is Jesus comfortable in your house is jesus comfortable with the conversation in your house now granted we're not we're not 100 percent perfect christians are we there's going to be conversations happen in our house that jesus is not going to be pleased with so but for the most part i believe that we can say jesus is comfortable with the conversation how about our the attitudes in our house is jesus comfortable with the attitudes in our house how about the entertainment that happens in our house is jesus comfortable with that uh, is jesus comfortable with the family relationship in our house i wonder about christian teenagers today is jesus comfortable in the teenager's room today is he comfortable with what he might see and hear in that room we all need to make sure that Jesus is comfortable in our 
house. It's also wise to worship Jesus in our house. Worship Jesus in our house. The wise men came into the house where Jesus was with his mother, and they fell down and they worshiped Jesus in the house. <coughs> Worship lifts the hearts of God's people as we praise him for all that he has done and all that he is and all the wonderful things that he does on our behalf as his children. So do we worship God in our house? Do we thank God in our house? Do we pray in our house? Do we meditate on God's word in our house? Do we praise God in our house? How do you worship God in your house? Well, there's a time that we should have every day of meditation in the word and so it's it's wonderful to take time and sink deeply in meditation in the bible you know a 10 10 minute meditation that is quality time is better than 30 minutes of rapid reading and zoning out okay so it's the quality of time that is really important as we meditate on the word of god in our house and then it's also wise to recognize Jesus as Lord of our house. He is to be Lord of our house. When the wise men came into the house where Jesus was, they recognized him as Lord. They did this by the gifts that they gave him. <coughs> they bowed before the toddler Jesus, one and a half or a little older maybe, and presented him with gold. They shared their gold with the Lord Jesus. It symbolized his deity and his royalty. The Ark of the Covenant was overlaid with gold. The streets in heaven are paved with transparent, pure gold. Uh, when my wife and I were in India, gold is a big thing over there. The people really enjoy to have gold. The, the beautiful, rich gold uh, that is over there in India, and they have lots of chains around their necks and jewelry of all kinds and so forth. And uh, it's really expensive. I don't know how they all can afford it, but man, it's everywhere. Gold, the symbol of the deity and royalty of the Lord Jesus. Frankincense, used for incense in the temple, speaks of our Lord's high priestly work for us. The Lord Jesus himself intercedes on our behalf. Boy, that is a wonderful truth to know and to remember, especially when things are tough and bad things happen. We know, we know Jesus is interceding for us. We need to recognize Jesus as the Lord of our house. And then they presented Jesus with myrrh, which speaks of his suffering. His suffering. He suffered and died so we would not have to. Myrrh was used for the embalming of the dead. The Lord Jesus' body was taken, and that myrrh and other spices were uh, put on his body and wrapped in, in all the strips of cloth that they wrapped him in. Our crucified Savior was embalmed and placed in a tomb. The gifts of the wise men were prophetic, the gifts of the wise men were expensive. The gifts of the wise men were meaningful. And the gifts of the wise men were worshipful. So the wise men recognized Jesus as Lord in his house. May we all do the same. Father, we thank you for these few moments of looking at the house. The house where the wise men met with the Lord Jesus. And then our house where there too we can worship honor you recognize you and live for you may we as your children here tonight uh, do that every single day that we live we just thank you father we thank you jesus thank you for coming down to this earth thank you for going and fulfilling bible prophecy there in bethlehem and then all kinds of prophecies that you also fulfilled we give you praise tonight we give you glory we honor the baby jesus and we do so in jesus name amen